All right, my people, welcome once again to another issue edition of Just Reason and Live, uh, the show where we amplify your voice. That's the voice of the Caribbean community, the voice of the black community, and talk about issues of relevance to us. Um, I'm one of your hosts, uh, C Dub. We have uh, Blade. We have Tex. We have uh, Officer Police, Miss Desiree. And we have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, Mr. Rashad Lou. Um, I will do a little research on him, so I'll just give a brief intro of what I know enough, then I'll allow him to um, give an intro, a proper introduction to um, his, um, why he's here in, in this conversation. So Rashad Lewis is running for Congress, for U.S. Congress to represent Texas uh, District uh, 36. That includes Baytown, Orange, some other places you can uh, talk about. Um, he's a young man, as you can see. He's a little, a little younger than me. You know, we're in the same age range, but you know, a little younger. Um, he, the youngest person ever elected to the Jasper City Council. Um, so that, you know, I love seeing young people get involved in this uh, business of politics. So, um, and something that I thought was interesting is that not only was he the youngest to serve in the Jasper City Council. He also got there as a write-in candidate. Write-in candidate, yeah, I, so I saw that as well. In order to do that, you have to have some serious, you know, grassroots drive. So he's running to represent Texas. So, Mr. Rashad, thank you for joining us here on Just Reasoning. Introduce yourself and tell the people what they need to know about you. Uh, well, you did a great job, uh, Chris. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Chris, and I am from Jasper, Texas. Um, a lot of people know my town for the uh, killing of James Bird in 1998. Um, that is correct. In 2017, uh, I did win my first election as a write-in. Um, I was told that I could not be on the ballot, um, but with me, with me being a fighter um, and me going against all odds, um, I chose to run as a write-in. So I did do the, the grassroots work. I did. I am a product of my community, so I did the work to get elected, I, and I beat my uh, opponent by a landslide in 2017. Um, being here, if you know anything about the area, it's very rural, so there's not a lot of resources, not a lot of economic development here. So on my time while I served, um, I was able to lower taxes and bring business here back to my city. Um, now, currently, I am running for Congressional District 36 for Congress. Um, I believe that the issues that I have grown up in, a lot of people in this district has grown through those same issues. And so my goal is to go to Congress and be an actual true voice for the people of this community. And this is why I'm here. And this is why I'm fighting. All right. Uh, great introduction there. So um, uh, District 36, I, I, know, I know very little about your district. You mentioned a few things just now. Um, if you can just kind of paint the picture for people who, you know, may, who may not know what Texas District 36 is like, um, what, describe the district, and uh, that's where you're from, it's where you're born and raised, I, I believe, um, just so, tell us about your district, what's like, the ethnic breakdown, that sort of thing, so just, uh, tell us about the district you're looking, the people um, you're looking to represent. No problem, my district, it has two sides to it, it's a very large district, it's, uh, it covers the east side of Harris County. Like you said earlier, Baytown, Pasadena, Deer Park. Then it comes all the way down to the rural area of where I'm from, Jasper, Texas. Um, it's like I said, it's a two-sided town. On my end of their 36, uh, it's mostly rural. So we do suffer, like I said earlier, from economic employment, hospitals, uh, healthcare, just the overall suppression. Um, if you know anything about this area, you know that we do suffer from hurricanes. Uh, we are a place where hurricanes do hit. And when the damage does happen, only a certain part of my district gets that, that aid and that need, which is the Harris County, your, your area. But my area, we do suffer. We still have people here, even in 2020, who is still trying to recover from Harvey. We mm -hmm. know that Harvey was a couple of years ago. So when it comes down to the resources of my district, only a, point, a portion of it gets the actual pay, while the other portion does not. And so okay. I think there's a whole body of 36. If one part is going to get it, the whole district should get it. And every family should not go without just because you're on the back end of that actual district. All right. So uh, looking at some um, 
I don't know if it's demographics, but uh, you you have an uphill battle. I'm sure you realize that um, in, in your race. So I was actually like looking at the, and this is one of the the tricks that you know um, politicians do, which you know drives me crazy. If you look at the, the way the district is drawn, the thing that stood out to me, it looks like it was drawn around Beaumont and Port Arthur, right? And I don't I, I don't think that's by accident, <laughs> right? I think they drew that too exclude you know heavily black minority areas from that so they can carve out their little districts you know which is nonsense to me um but so based on on that you can you can comment on, on, on that if you, uh, you will but just looking at your so your incumbent looks like he was first elected in 2014 in that election um he won with 76 percent of the vote uh 2016 he ran on a polls. Uh, well, there is no Democrat, at least. And in 2018, he won with 72%. So, with that said, it seems, without having really known the district, it's like it's a heavy Republican district. So, with that said, what does your path to victory look like? Because we know that there are a lot of people who, um, are, who do not vote, aren't registered to vote. Right. So, but, but, you know, if, the, if you rely on the same people who have always voted, then you're going to have a really uphill battle. So what does your path to victory look like, given um, those th those odds? Um, you are correct. My actual battle is, if you're looking at it on paper, it is an uphill battle. What I think what people fail to realize and understand is that there are a lot of people who do not vote within my district. Um, there are a lot of people between the ages of 18 and 35 who have never voted in any election in any past years. What also people forget to realize actual district is in the York State, uh, Harris County area, there are a lot of Hispanics that live in that area who have never voted in any election. So I think that we have an op actual opportunity to change that narrative because not only have they not voted, but this is the very first time in Texas that we have a no straight party ballot. So at this point, it's time for the voters to actually do the work. Normally in history, you just come in, you bubble one one bubble for the Republican Party, and everybody gets that actual vote, whether you know them or not. But I think at this point, the actual voters have to do the work. And with that being said, we have our actual target to get those people who have not came to vote to come and vote. Um, a lot of people feel like because I was on probation or I've been, I, I've had, I have a feeling that I cannot vote, and that is not true. If not you true. Spend the time. If you paid your debt to society, you do have the opportunity to let your voice be heard. And so we're on the road to actually let those people know that don't, you don't have to sit on the back of the bus and watch everything go on. You can be a part of the actual fight. And so we're trying to grab all those people who feel like they don't have a voice and let them understand that this actual election is like a life or their situation. Your voice will be heard. Okay. All right, uh, y'all jump So in. I have a question, I have a question. <clears throat> so you know what it's gonna take and what, what's necessary to do and how are you doing that exactly? Because what we don't get a lot of chance to see is politicians roll up their sleeves and actually get out there in the communities and meet people and talk to them and introduce themselves. They base it on billboards and commercials and you know, a lot of people don't have the money for that. So what exactly does it look like for you? Like, how are you gonna get the word out about who you are? Um, well, very simple. I know that right now we're like in the middle of a pandemic of COVID-19. And so on the politician part about it, it's like very limited what I can do. But because I have an actual um, background in marketing and nightlife, to me, it's, 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 it's like, it's what I'm used to doing. So making yeah. calls, uh, social media, um, doing Zoom calls like tonight, doing everything, sending text messages to all of my voters, just let them know that I'm here. Doing everything that I can with the opportunity that I have. I can't knock on doors, but everything else, I'm making sure that I do that to my best ability. Okay, is there anything that we can do to help? Um, like right now, just spreading the word, you know, getting people to know that, they do, that they do have another option on the ballot. And so right now, we're doing name recognition. At this point, getting my name out to as many people as I can is the best thing I can do at this point. Yeah, that, that, that's actually, that, that's, that's a great point, Des. Uh, so, you know, my wife and I, we've been living in this house for about 15 years. And 
for the 15 years that we've lived here, once, and that was, I think, last year, has a politician knocked on our door and asked for our vote. And you know what? We remembered her. You know, took a picture with her daughter, and you know, and I, I told her that that people don't do that. They just assume that you know you're going to vote a certain way. But she came and knocked and discussed her platform, um, and I think that's very important. As as you, as you mentioned, it makes it difficult with the times that we're. Well, it makes it, it it makes it different in the times that we're living in. But yeah, through platforms such as this, you know, you can reach a few thousand people here, a few thousand people here. And get them to spread the word, you know. So, um, you know, it looks like you know. You, you say you have a background in marketing, and that that's what it takes, you know. So, uh, you know, that that grassroots grinding. Yep, get creative. That's right. So I'm waiting for my yard sign. Yes. <laughs> Your yard sign. I did to give you a T-shirt. I got some masks made uh, today. Oh. I would like to give you all the uh, emotional things that you all would need to advertise. Yeah, she, okay. she she's she's always begging for t-shirts, so you know that's you know, <laughs> just, just, just tune her up. The first uh, question that I wanted, like your name, uh, your namesake, Rashad, right? You, I know, I'm sure you have gotten you know confused with him, or the, that question has come that's, up, that's you know, question. which one of the Rashad Lewis is this? Is this the former NBA player or whatever? That one is Rashad. Has that been helping you, or has that been <laughs> how has that been going? Like uh, even the name. Even yeah, I was doing um, like <laughs> that was like the thing that worked for me. If I was a good Rashad right. Lewis on the flyer for an event, they would yeah, order yeah. me that he would be the basketball player. Oh, okay, that's what's yeah, that so was it works. It works. Yeah, it works. Mm -hmm. but um, I think with the thing about it, the last name Lewis is a very strong name, um, and I just want to pay homage to uh, John Lewis who just mm. passed. Mm. So in the political in the political world, the last name Lewis is a very strong name, um, and so I believe that, that it's, a, it's an easy name to remember. Yeah, so, you know. That, so I know I, I know there's a lot of um, grassroots um, publicists, grassroots um, figureheads, you know, influencers. I.e., Sean Lewis, Sean um, is one of them that comes to mind. Sean King where he normally endorses, like meets, you know, the same thing that we're doing right now, have like a quick conversation to figure out who you are, what you're about, what your platform is, you know, just find out exactly who you are. And then they typically use their platform to endorse candidates who they feel are for the people. Regardless right. if, rarely if you're a Republican, mostly if you're a Democrat, but they're more for, you know, what the character of the person is. Have you reached out to any of those people? And if so, which ones have you been successful in them, you know, lending a hand towards you or, you know, how has that been? Well, I reached out to uh, Sean King. Um, he's, he's someone that's really big uh, about being an advocator, uh, just for black mm -hmm. people in general. Um, so, but I, I know that with everything, my name probably falls in the midst of a lot of emails that they normally get. So my job is to do everything outside to get their attention. So sometimes you have to make the fire or make the noise outside of what they know for them to come to you. So that's why I'm doing everything that I can to get their attention the right way. You know, so um, that's what we're doing now. Right. So, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, John, John Lewis and, you know, I was actually going to ask you about him. Yeah, it's probably, you know, somebody that you have looked up to. And just from the, the, the very little bit that I... I know from you just from looking at your website and you know public interviews and, and that sort of thing. Um, the similarity I see is John Lewis was an activist who became a politician. Um, so I kind of that's my read from you know looking at your background is that you're somebody who is very interested in activism and being involved and and then if, if the best way to get certain things done is through elected office, then you will do that. So uh, that, I'm, 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 I actually didn't even put the same last name together. It's, you know, probably like a, a great uncle or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Even so, if it ain't, claim it. Yeah, we'll claim it. Exactly. <laughs> like my uncle used to say. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for, for District 36, um, what do you think are the, the biggest challenges for the people in your district? What are the, the challenges unique to the people in your district? 
Um, well, there's a lot of issues, so but we, we can talk about the current issues. Um, like I was saying earlier, we we're right in the middle of a pandemic of COVID-19. So there is, in my area of District 36, there are a lot of hospitals that do not have the proper PPE or even have the space for holding COVID-19 patients. Uh, just on my end of, of District 36, um, the closest hospital bed is all the way in Dallas, Texas. Our um, hospital here currently only can do ER. There is no doctors that can deliver babies, uh, even on a regular day. So we deal with a lot of suffering on the healthcare world, and we're really seeing that hurt even in the midst of this pandemic. So things like that are very important. And now we're finding ourselves going back or being issued to go back to school with our kids. Uh, what people don't understand is that in this area, we do not have high speed internet. So if you are going to ask kids to go to school or do homeschool, how can they do that if they don't have the internet to even do the online school? They don't have it at all or it's just limited? It's very it's limited. You have to out of the city limits. And even with that, that kind of is not the best internet to have. Mm. So just think about the actual people who have low income. Right. They can't even afford internet right now. So how can they be able to do that if the actual school district says, hey, we're going to allow the kids to stay home for the very first couple of weeks and do home. Good point. So you're finding yourself having a large number of people who are suffering, yeah. even on the back end, because everyone expects that everybody in their home has a computer, a laptop, a tablet, and high speed internet, and that is not the truth. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... You know that that's obviously uh that you know that's a challenge for for for, for everyone um you know but that, as you as you described so you have because we, we had last week we on the show we had um, a, a counselor high school counselor in the houston area and so she was just talking about all the different challenges that that aren't really discussed on the news um and there are more challenges than we think so you now you have to you know you have to be balancing the health and safety of our children um, and you know, still want them to get an education, and then the, the challenges if with working, you know, with learning remotely and that sort of thing. So it's a, uh, it's one of the difficult, most difficult time periods for most people um, right now. Whether you're, you know, as an employer, as an employee, as a student, it's just a difficult time. Um, as, as it comes to uh, economics and and jobs, um, so from some looking at some of you know some economic um policies that you mentioned on your side so um what i what i gather from what was was, was on your website is that there's been a lot of economic displacement within your district people who used to work certain jobs those jobs aren't really available anymore either through automation or outsourcing and to me um you know, and, and that, that, that's a common thing throughout many parts of the United States. And, you know, that's really, you know, we, we don't talk about Trump too much on this show. Um, but basically, I think it's, it, it's one of the things that he um, capitalized on, said for, for even though these trends are, 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 are global, outsourcing, automation, that's eliminating certain jobs. Um, his response to that was to just let's blame black people, brown people, blame immigrants. They are the cause of all your problems. Um, and not, you know, look at any real solution. So as I think about, imagine what the breakdown of your district is, how do you get that message across about how your policies will help to, you know, you know, rather retraining, uh, people, you know, getting them involved in, you know, in, in green jobs and infrastructure jobs and all these these different things, which are the real solution. You know, um, how do you get people who who may not be inclined to listen to you otherwise to get them to believe that this is an actual approach um, that can work? You know, th despite whatever their ideological thinking may be, and think we can just you know reopen factories and get back to normal because it's not economically feasible. How do you get them to buy into your economic message? Well, the thing about it is um, very simple. Um, I live by the example. Uh, before I'm a politician, uh, I'm a husband and I'm a father. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur uh, and I'm a leader and I'm, a, I'm an actual organizer and an activist at heart. So the thing about it is some, sometimes people have to see it. 
um, to believe it. And even at this point, I know a lot, that a lot of people are suffering economic wise because a lot of people have not been back to work since the pandemic started all the way in March. Um, but what I understand from the economic part of it is, is that energy never goes away. And I was talking to someone about this the other day. I believe that my district could definitely grow if they were able to tap into solar panels. Um, I believe that would be a market that would boom my district all the way from my, my part of the district all over to Harris County. Um, because what, one thing I do know, energy does not never go away. And if you are a producer of energy, you will always be working even in the middle of a pandemic. So my whole goal is to make it to Washington, but to also bring back a company or multiple companies that produce energy. We understand that on that side of Baytown, Pasadena, Jeff Park, the gas and oil industry is made, is is mostly the primary job or economic power meant within that district. Um, today, I got word that another another plant blew up today, um, what in my district, and so we're finding ourselves people are, are, are dying. Maybe I don't think anyone had died, but just the whole point of not being able to work. The people in the actual area is suffering. I don't know what kind of tank blew up. But it's just a point of we need to move into a way that we can supply our actual economics around it. Question, Rashad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the things I noticed on uh, your website after doing some research is your stance on criminal justice reform. Okay. Um, one of the things you pointed out is um, something about the uh, national reform on the bail system. So I wanted you to talk about that. All right, yeah, when it comes to the, the criminal justice, there is nothing, there is no way sufficient that we can truly get to the bottom of it. What I've also learned is when it comes to the police, with me being on the city council, it's a local issue. Um, I know that we can make all the laws that we need to make, but I think the actual work starts on the local level. So I believe that if we was to get with the police chiefs or even the, the actual county sheriffs, and we allow them to implement rules for them, then it will go across the whole, the whole entire platform of the whole police. Okay, understood. Um, yeah, so on police. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have, you know, officer uh, Lioness there. So, uh, so uh, this is, so looking over your um, website, I do have one point of contention. Um, and so, you know, we'll, ha we'll have a discussion about that. So when, when, when you hear the phrase, defund the police, mm -hmm. what, what does that phrase mean to you when, when, when you hear that phrase? Uh, when someone says the word defund, uh, I think that's a, a really hard word to use um, because there's so many layers to that word. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, we understand that police officers are what we call first responders. Mm -hmm. um, but we also understand that, like I was saying earlier, every every city, every local government has the option to actually make that budget for their local police on city council. We had the power to make the budget that allowed them to, um, yes. <laughs> Sorry, that's my daughter. I don't hey, know. It happens every show hey, with us. Every show. <laughs> <laughs> but like I was saying, um, your local government, they do have the power to make that budget. So to say, so to say to defund the police, you can't, you have to go to your local officers, the ones you elect in your backyard to make that possible. But I don't think that we should totally defund the police. I believe that every police department should have their own evaluation. In every department that has multiple uh, cases, like we have learned, every every place or every officer that has killed someone on the arm that was black, it wasn't their first offense. Right. So right. we, so we, so I hold the actual department responsible for allowing an officer to not be held responsible for their previous actions. It should never have gotten to the point of an actual death. And then now we're hearing about all the priors that you've done pre previously leading up to this actual kill. Right. So, I mean, I I, I, I will agree with you that, um, you know, so the, 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 when, the, when I first heard the, the word defund the police, um, I didn't like the phrase either because it gives, I, I think the, the term is misleading. So it has two, it has two, it has two effects. For one, it starts the conversation, which is good. 
um, the negative is that it can be easily um, misrepresented. Um, so, but once I hear it explain, and, and you know, in, in marketing, as you know, if you have to explain the message, then you're kind of losing it a little bit. You know, so it should it should be something that shouldn't have to. But it's one of those things that's bold and shocking, and it's going to make people have an answer for it. But what defund is really is is reprioritizing and repurposing what we ask the police to do. So as I you know look at you know some of the the the, the points that you mentioned on your website, which which I agree with um, about um, you know body cams on every police officer. However, we know that we have seen police kill people on camera and get away with it. So I, I, I used to be off the mindset that, well, if they just had body cams, it would just be so obvious to everybody that, hey, then they'll start getting charged. But we've seen, you know, in, in, in Minnesota, you know, with uh, Philando Castile, you know, him getting killed right there on camera where the cop got off. There are many incidents where we've seen the cops get off. So not that it's a bad thing. I just don't think it goes far enough. Um, also, you know, yeah, yeah a, 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 a few other issues. Um, I, I think ultimately what, what it comes down to is if we don't change, oh, the thing that you mentioned, like retraining and better hiring and training, those are good things. Nobody will be opposed to that. However, you have a police culture that's been ingrained in these departments for you know decades. So you can hire and retrain all you want. That's not going to change anything right away. Right. I think unless we redefine what we ask the police to do, and not send an armed gunman or gunwoman to, in, you know, to intervene in every scenario with a homeless person sleeping on the bench. You don't need somebody with where, where I've literally seen that result in the homeless person getting killed, um, or you know, a counterfeit twenty dollar bill, kneel on the man's neck and get him killed. We just send, you know, to a, you know, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? So we will send armed police to deal with every situation. If we don't redefine. The situations where we send armed gunmen to deal with the situation that we're going to continue having these problems. So defund to me, I, I, I I'll agree it's a it's not a great term, but defund is really about repurposing, redefining what we ask them to do, what we ask them to respond to. So that's my view on it, and you can comment on that. And uh, no, I, I, t I totally um, agree with what you're saying um, when it comes down to it. Um, I believe, like I was telling someone today, that uh, I believe that us as African Americans, most of us should become police officers. Um, I think it's like a taboo career that we don't hear too many African Americans saying that they are proud to be a police officer. But I believe that if you want the proper people to protect you in your neighborhood, they must look like you can be from your neighborhood. Um, I, I know a lot of people, um, like I was saying, like um, during the day, more hours to become a barber than it is to become a police officer. You know, and, and, and how is that? You know, it, it, it takes more time to know how to cut my hair than it is to have the hours to learn how to protect and serve me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think that if we want to see more more protection in our community, then the people like us should come out of our neighborhoods to protect and serve us. And so I believe that our justice system can do a better job when it comes to uh, giving our people justice. Because at the end of the day, if a, if a man kills me, you prosecute him. But if an officer kills me, it's a different type of standard. But at the end of the day, he is still a man like I am a man, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so you have to look at it at that point. If he was not a cop and he killed me, then you would have a repercussion for that. But because he wore a badge to protect and serve me, then there's a there's another another side to that actual um, story, and I think that's not fair. So the term "Black Lives Matters," um, depending on who you speak to about it, it can have a negative con cognitation. Is that the word? Yes. It can have a negative stigmatism of, attached to it. How do you feel about Black Lives Matter, and what does it mean to you? Oh, most definitely. Um, not too long ago, I just uh, put together the very first Black Lives Matter here in my own city. Um, we've never had a protest like that in the history. Um, so we did that around the George Floyd um, time, but we also honored the death of Junior, Junior at that time. So mm -hmm. as an African-American man, yes, Black lives do matter. You know, and like you say, it really depends on who you're talking to. 
Uh, I think that the actual person with common sense understand that all lives matters, but we're seeing a repeated death of, of black lives. So if you believe in all lives and you see that there's one demographic that's being targeted, then you must stand behind that if you believe that and, and fight with us to let people know that, hey, we are seeing an ongoing assault on African-American people. And a lot of people who I talk to say that, oh, well, they're Christian or they, or they believe in God. But if you believe in God, then you understand that we're all God's people. So at the end of the day, you should be fighting just as long with us, just like we fought with you. Because it seems like in history, that every time there is a fight or a subject that needs to be fought for, African-Americans come to the bat for everything, women's rights, LGBT rights. We're always on the forefront with other people with their issues, but it seems like when it's us, no one is around. And I believe that's what I believe when it comes to Black Lives Matter. It does matter. So you don't believe, you don't see Black Lives Matter as a um, equivalent to the KKK. They're not a Ooh. hate group in your- <laughs> if I'm looking at the <laughs> they're not a hate group or someone that you feel like is trying oh, to. Oh, I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> no, I, no, Are we I, interviewing you, Chris? <laughs> I didn't say anything. I'm just um, reacting. <laughs> no, um, I don't believe that Black Lives Matter is a hate group because history has shown what hate groups look like. Okay. Groups have done. So if you're looking at that, what history have shown to be a hate group and, and hate being being put out, what Black Lives Matter is doing, they're, they're actually basically speaking for what they believe is right. And in America, we have that, we have the opportunity to speak for what we believe. And if you don't like it, you don't have to like it. But at the end of the day, we do have that right to speak for what we believe. Right. Um, speaking of uh, KKK, <laughs> um, yeah, sure. <laughs> so you were, you, you live in Jasper. Most Texas, and, and and you mentioned um, the James yeah, Bird in '98 situation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question to help me put my mind at ease because every time I'm riding down I 10 and uh, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, don't stop, don't I stop, don't that, stop, don't stop. Exactly, you already know. So <laughs> yeah. I'm riding down I 10 and I see that Jasper sign, and if I need gas, I don't care. I can see that Walmart from I 10 or whatever. I'm not stopping. Okay. Yes. I keep on going. And we're like, we just gonna have to make it to the next town, city. <laughs> we're gonna have to make it to New Orleans before I stop. <laughs> so, <laughs> talk about that. I put my mind at ease. Help me put my mind at ease about that. Well, I, I guess, um, I guess when you've been raised uh, in in a society like that, you don't look at it in that um, aspect because you're born and raised in it. Um, when I was growing up, the city that we was told not to go to was Vida. So, um, okay. us Vida was that too. Yeah. yeah, but but as a grown person and someone who has lived in Houston for 14 years and have traveled the world, you, you start to realize that the actual things that you were subject to growing up, you can see the discrimination amongst colors. So a lot of things that the, that the go girl. The things that I, <laughs> love it. Love yeah, my it. <laughs> I know, right? Um, the things that um, we was not allowed to do and other races was allowed to do that was normal to us, not knowing that we were being discriminated because of the color of our skin. Um, so I believe that anywhere you go, um, there is a level of discrimination that you feel your skin. It might not be at the magnitude of another place, but there's always discrimination. So it's safe to stop through Jasper if that's your you're here. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's what I need you know, to know. I, 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 was, yeah, I was going to ask, you know, a similar question because I was I was I, talk, I was talking to a cousin of mine in London, England, like a month ago, and you know, she, yeah, I talked to her in a while, and you know, found I'm living in Texas, and then she brought up the you know there was that incident where they dragged that black man and you know so some way over in Europe, you know, people know Jasper by that you know because of that incident, which is unfortunate. Uh, so I, I, I think you said when that time when that happened. You're around 12 years old, right? So, how, how do you believe that the city has changed? And you know, at 12 years, you know, you're you're aware, but not as aware as you as you are right now. How would you say the city has changed 
uh, from then, 1998, to now in terms of uh, race relations and, and, and all sorts of issues? Um, in my opinion, um, I don't believe it has changed too much. Mm -hmm. um, I believe there's always going to be a system uh, set against a certain race here. Um, like you say, me, I was a first writer. In my time serving city council, I was the only African American um, to be on that council. Uh, in the history of Jasper, we only had one African American mayor in the whole time. Wow. When you look at the positions in the courthouse, uh, the judges, the DA, even the county clerk, there are no African Americans at representation uh, in our banks. Um, there are only probably only one, maybe two, but only one African American who's a bank teller. So you see the system uh, through all, throughout every every little aspect. So, but what I do understand is that when multiple black people come together to do things that are great, it does bring a frightening and a fear amongst the other people in the community. And I believe that they've been doing that for so long, they have kept us down. But like me, I'm a product of that from Jasper, so what I'm doing is heroic to my community. And me, I'm the first one to do it. So I believe that I set the example for that people know that I understand what you all think about you, but there are great people. Come out the ashes and be great in the city. Yep, yep. So let me ask this. Do you come from a lineage of um, politicians? Did someone else around you, did you grow up seeing this? What, who or what motivated you to say, I'm going to run for city council and now I'm going to go to Congress? Like, that's a big deal. Yep, that's a is. big deal. Yeah, most people well, nobody's think about that. My father is a pastor. So um, I seen a lot. Well, <laughs> I seen a lot. Of, <laughs> I seen a lot growing up, and so I seen my father be, you know, a community leader. Um, and so it's always been instilled with me to be a servant first. Um, so for me, like you say, to come back to my city and to see businesses and places on the clothes, it was just my DNA. Be like, well, how can I help? I never sought out to be a politician. My whole goal was how can I and what can I do to make my city better? Mm. Um, so that was my initial motive when it came down to even being where I'm at now. And that's still my motto. What can I do as an individual to make sure that the life is better for not just my kids, but everyone coming behind me? So that's been my motto and my motto ever since I've been in this lane. Yeah. So what comes after being in Congress? Do you have any aspirations of going beyond that? Or is that kind of like, you're stopping yeah. let him get to congress first <laughs> we claiming it we right. claiming it in he jesus already in name what comes after congress um i would love to go to congress and i would love well i'm going to go to congress i'm going to speak that into existence yeah you may amen. Amen. touch and agree yes. <laughs> and if, it, if, if it calls for me to go to a high level like a senate level then i would do that but I understand mm -hmm. that I need to go, I need to get to Congress first and do the work there first. But I also have other dreams, but at right now, the whole goal is to get to Congress first and then I allow God to take care of the rest. Amen. Exactly. So since we're still on that subject, if you could choose any politician that you would say, I want to mirror myself after them, or I want, you know, to model myself after them, who would it be? Um, I know everybody thinks Barack Obama, but, um, no, everybody does it. <laughs> do. hang, hang up, Desiree. Right, I would on. like to say, um, like I was saying earlier, uh, John, uh, John, John Lewis. Um, Lewis. John Lewis. I am an activist at heart, and I understand nice. the, the work that happens on the ground first. Um, you don't want to go much behind the desk, but you have to get and you have to be a product of the people. So John, I watch John Lewis, and I admire everything he's done. So I have to say John Lewis. Boy, if you had said Donald Trump, Anyway, <laughs> sorry, we gotta go, Rashad. <laughs> does, does Zoom have a dial talk? <laughs> <laughs> the right. weirder things have happened. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but you, or you think about it. Um, you know, here we're, you know, we're talking, you know, to Rashad, you know, er, early mid mid thirties, and you you think about the path that you know that you know, somebody like Barack Obama, you know, took. You know, being a community organizer, which is what Rashad said, you know, he's organizing to address specific issues. So, you know, a water main is busted and I'm, how, how can I get that fixed? And then you, if you have that attitude of service, 
I want to serve the needs of people and you just keep serving and just kind of do as you're led. So, I mean, you know, I think once you have the attitude of service, you know, how God wants you is how he will use you. I mean, this is the most we've talked about God on just reasoning, even though we're all believers here. <laughs> but all right, I, have, I have a very easy question. Actually, it's not an easy question, but it's, uh, it's, it's uh, never an easy question with you. No, it, 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 it's not. But and, and, and there are no simple answers to this. Um, but, you know, young people with big visions, taking on big challenges, you know, want, want to hear big ideas. So when we talk about uh, Jasper, uh, James Bird, we, you know, George Floyd, um, the systemic discrimination and what have you, how do you believe that we best eliminate systems of, um, you know, disenfranchisement, systemic discrimination that are in existence in voting, in business, in housing, in education, because of, you know, the nature of the way this country was built, right? So what are the things that we, what are some ideas that we, that we need to, what are some ways in which we can help to start kicking down these walls of systemic disenfranchisement and, um, you know, discrimination that exists within our society. I, I know that's a, that's a big topic, but just some ideas that, that you know, immediately come to mind. Um, very simple. And we'll take it light. Yeah, no problem. I think it's, it's very simple. I think everything that, that you name, I think it starts on the local level. I think people forget how powerful your local government is um, because it affects you now. And I feel that the, re the how we break that actual system is electing people in our local government to be an advocate for us at our care moment, like from your baby to your judge, to your DA, to your community clerk. All of the people that have that power to make those decisions right there and right there. Yes. So I feel that if you break that mold, you have to put more people in your local government who can fight for you and be an advocate for you because they have the resources that you need right there and right there. So that's how you break that mold. Right. <laughs> Let her say hi. Let her say hi. She's got to get it out. She's got to get it out. Come on, baby. Come and say hi. Uh, do, do not listen to Officer Lioness. Uh, all right. Um, music. What do you listen to? What, what 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 what's on your playlist right now? You know, give us your top five or what have you. What are you bumping? Um. Well, I like the two singles that J Cole just released. Um, oh. I'm a big fan of Anderson Pack. I can jam him all day. Um, you like the music, yeah. The new Sarah album that he just dropped, I think, like last year. Um, D Woods, his brother, very, very country brother. He has a nice album out. I'm more, I'm more of like your country type of, of nice. people who give me uh, music with substance and I can learn from. So that's, that's like what I've been bumping lately in the gym. Yeah. And it have was you, your bomb time. Have you ever? Playlist. I was just about I, I, to say that. Now, what's on your regular playlist? What's up? Bro, you you ain't got the line, Craig. You that. ain't got the line. You don't listen to reggae. You don't listen to it. But do, do you listen to reggae? Um, I do. Um, I do. I'm not as much um, because yeah, like, when I'm at, we don't really have a radio station. And so. Well, you um, have us now, Rashad. We got you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because I don't really have access to it in my local radio, and there's yeah. no one around me to listen to um, the music, but I'm always open to hearing. Uh, All right. So tell me, who, who was the favorite person to listen to? The YouTube Buju. Buju Bantan Chronics. Um, that way I, I, I'll send you a whole list. Coffee. Send me a list. Yeah. Um, I love me. Send me a list. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm to drop some Caribbean music on one of my uh, political political exactly. videos. Exactly. Sure. Des will have to hook you up with the soca. I don't know. I, I don't got know soca, you. But yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely, man. So. Man, definitely. Anybody I have any other questions before um, let Rashad go? You know, I know it's daddy daughter time and right like, daddy why are you still on the phone yeah, they, they want a TikTok. <laughs> i just have one more <laughs> there's a thousand topics there's a thousand political this and that give me your top five what you hold dearest to your heart your most top five um political topics that you plan on addressing like your top five okay um 
felt. So number one, it has to be relief, disaster relief, um, or even what we call health relief at this point, because we're in a health disaster at this point. Um, so that would be my very first one. Uh, to play behind that, it would be healthcare, because that goes a, a lot of relief, um, education, right now, uh, economic development is very big, and criminal reform will have to be my five because it affects me, it affects me here. All very important, very good. Tex, Blade, any final thoughts, final questions? Uh, just to say, man, we, we appreciate your effort. We need more like you. Thank you for joining us today. No problem, I appreciate what you all are doing. I'm giving me this platform to be seen, to be heard. I thank you all for that also. Blade, under 30 no. minutes, please. Nothing <laughs> to add, just it was a pleasure having this conversation. You know, you seem like a real cool dude, real cool brother, and definitely rooting for you to get in office. We need more people who we can relate to, um, who truly represent their diaspora, represent the community. Um, so definitely want someone who goes in and remembers where they're coming from. So from the conversation that we have in and, you know, from what Des and Chris have been saying, you know, it's, it, it would be good to have a real person representing us and not just someone who is trying to be politically correct and play the game. So, yeah. Mr. Rashad, give us your plug. Where can people find you, that's, follow that's, you? That's exactly what I'm you up. I got you, Chris. Yeah. Well, like you said, you can check out my website. Um, my website is lewisforcongress.com. That's, that's Lewis for Congress, right? The number four Congress, right? Yes, so it's L-E-W-I-S, the number four, congress.com. Um, I also have a Facebook page, uh, Lewis for Texas. You can find me there. Or if you can even email me at info at lewisforcongress.com. I'm always by my phone. And so anytime you email me, I email you right back. All right. That's so, true. Yeah, so I I, I, I I will second everybody else's um, thoughts that, you know, we, we thank you for joining us here today. We thank you for taking the time out of your evening. You know, it's kind of late and you have, you know, young, young young kids, but we appreciate you coming and talking to us and, you know, sharing with us your vision for a better America, you know, a better District 36. And, you know, this country's made up of a bunch of different districts. Everybody do their part to make their district better in one way or another than, you know, the whole country would rise. So um, we thank you. And, um, you know, we wish you all the best. We will support you any way we can, you know, with this, this video. What we After we after record live here, we um, chop it up and edit it and we share it all over the place, you know. So, you know, um, it's grassroots. So as we, as we mentioned in, in the very beginning, you, you have an uphill battle. So we need support from everyone. So we will do our part to get the word out. Um, and then ask people to share it and then, hey, shock the world and, you know, make, make changes. So, um, yeah, man. So, uh, thank you, brother. Um, so, a, a quick observation that has nothing uh -oh. to do with the conversation that we just had. That, I like your, I, I like your, so, so his kid, his, his daughter is coming up and straight face, don't move, but the hand went over, hit mute. Has his daughter pat her on the head. None of y'all know it. Right. <laughs> All right, baby. Daddy love you. While the mute button is on, talk to the Steve. Unmute. Yes, sir. And keep it going. Bro. My, my dude. I, 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 man, he's, he works hard under pressure. Man, All yeah, right. That's what I to ask him to another level, bro. You're professional. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, bro. We'll, uh, so we'll uh, when I, when I, we post these videos, I'll tag you in it, and you know, let's uh, let's make Texas great again. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Um, at this point, let's let's go around and just give final thoughts, and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap it up. And you know, Rashad, since you're still here, might as well give your final thoughts too. So uh, we'll start off with you, Rashad. Give us some. So what we do at the end of the show, um, everybody gives like a just final final thoughts, just something that's on their mind. You know, it may be you know something that you're promoting. It may be just some words of wisdom, whatever. Um, so you're on the spot. One minute, give your final thoughts. Well, I, I guess I just want to pay homage to you all and uh, tell you that I appreciate what you all are doing, just for the culture. 
Um, we need more people um, like you all out here spreading the word and um, putting people on to allow people to have the opportunity to be heard on all the things. Um, I would also like to tell the people who are watching who might be going through whatever they're going through, if it's the COVID-19 or even the unemployment, that, that you know what, everything um, happens for a reason, but God will always lead you to where you need to be. And if you keep God first, man, everything else will work out. That's what's up. Yeah. We touch and agree. Bled. Welcome back, Mr. Blade. I haven't seen you in uh, two months. Final yeah. thoughts. So, How are you? You good? Yeah, we're good. We're good now. We're good now. Hopefully, uh, we just keep getting better. Um, yeah. So, definitely glad to be back. Definitely glad to be able to have this conversation. After going through certain things, you know, you start taking the smallest things, even the, the puns that Chris be throwing, you know, little cracks or whatever. That's what I do. You, you 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 look forward to those stuff. You know, the <laughs> big brother, little brother, you know, bickers or whatever that we have. You know? So it's 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 crazy. You know, a month ago I was like not able to. You know, you know, definitely have to get done. So I want to say thanks for all the well wishes, all the prayers, all 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 of that good stuff. You know, it was truly felt and truly appreciated, and definitely glad to be back. Yeah, man. Desi, officer, final thoughts. Alter Eager 2029. No. Final uh, thoughts are um, let's get serious about our future. Uh, going out and voting depends on it. Our life depends on it. If you're really fed up of, of everything that's going on, then let your voices be heard. Get out there and vote. Um, early voting starts when? Anybody, anybody, anybody? I think they pushed it um, back to October the 3rd. I believe so. They, I think they extended yeah. it to be longer than it has ever been before. So I want to say October the 3rd is the actual first day of October. Right. I'm wrong, but I think it's October. I'll be there day well, one. <laughs> so start doing the research and looking out for it. Make sure you're there. Get to the polls. Do your part. And let your voices be heard. That's my final thoughts. Two texts. Uh, your vote counts. Uh, Lewis for Congress. Uh, he would have my vote if I was in that district. So um, go out and support um, Rashad Lewis, District 36. Um, Former NBA player. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> doing good things. And uh, again, I want to thank him for uh, joining the platform today. Uh, we appreciate you, brother, and keep on doing your thing. Yep. Y yeah, so second in all those thoughts. And remember, um, whether we live in District 36 or not, I'm sure Mr. Lewis would love our financial supports and our marketing support. And sure. so we can support in other ways. We, you know, we, we know a bunch of people in Baytown, so we can you know, help to get the word out there and, you know, ask them to tell people who live elsewhere in the district. Um, but, you know, so, you know, there, there, there are many people who, who kind of look at things that aren't right in their cities and their communities and just complain about it. And then there are those who actually get up and do something about it. Um, you know, it's clear from you at a young age decided, you know, I'm going to run for city council. And then after that, you know, I'm going to run for mayor. And now I'm going to run for Congress. You know, you're one of those people who decided enough talking about these problems. They don't get better talking about them. Um, let me do something about it. So it's, that's a lesson for all of us, regardless of your age, you're young, old, you know, like Dwayne or what, what have you, then, you know, you can... <laughs> Then you, the change. <laughs> then you can make a difference. So, yeah. um, you know, we just kind of all have that mindset. How, how can we better our families, our communities, our cities in one little way? Then, you know, as we say in Jamaica, look, 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 make nuff, nuff. What that means is that a little bit, you know, a whole lot of a little bit can make an impact. So, yeah. um, you know, people, thank you once again for tuning in to Just Reasoning, justreasoning.com. Um, we will share this video. Um, you check out the past videos of other, um, you know, shows that we've done. What we are, we aim to amplify the voice of our community. That's our Caribbean community, our Black community. All issues of relevance to us, we're talking about it. Um, hit us up. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Um, my Soul Rebel page on Facebook and the Just Reason group. So, until next week, same time, same channel. Um, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for Just Reasoning. Um, bless up. One love.